module 28 that is spoilage of fresh meat, fish and seafood. We are going to cover this module as introduction to food spoilage, then what is spoilage of meat, what are the principles which underlie the meat spoilage, categories of meat spoilage, spoilage of fresh meats, spoilage of fish and the factors which are going to affect the rate of spoilage of fish. We will also include the spoilage in some seafood. When we talk about spoilage, what comes to our mind is the process which makes the food stuff unfit for consumption. Spoilage of food can take place in two ways. First, natural or normal decomposition of food stuff which is usually due to their inherent enzymes which are present and second is the microbial contamination and their enzymes which come into the foreplay and decompose the food. When we talk about spoilage in animal foods, we say that it becomes unfit for human consumption chiefly due to bad smell and unpleasant taste. Why this happens? This happens due to the process which is known as autolysis and it spoils the meat, fish and the seafood. Extreme autolysis leads to sarring of the product and usually there are number of protolytic reactions which are taking place on the connective tissue, muscle and the fat. The fat also undergoes hydrolysis. When we talk about spoilage, there are certain features of this particular spoilage which takes place in meat. This happens due to protein hydrolysis and this is due to the enzymes which are present in meat which facilitate the microbial growth inside the meat. At times we also see the slime which is growing on the external surface of the fishes. In case of seafood, this will have an additional contamination source because we are using various types of ingredients in these products. We are also talking about various contact surfaces. These can be the machinery. It is also increased by the handling as well as the packaging equipment. When we talk about spoilage and in particular the meat spoilage, we deal with the entry of microorganisms. From where do they come? First, the atmosphere. They also come from the external parts of animals. They come from the elementary tract of animals. We are also talking about equipments which are used during the slaughter, dressing and cutting. Even the handlers, the workers who are handling the meat, they also act as a source of contamination. When we talk about the microorganisms associated with meat, they can be Cornobacterium, Clostridium tetani, Enterobacteriaceae. We can also have various other species of Leuconostox which can be associated with the meat. We also see the incidence of Pseudomonas. So when we are talking about the microbial invasion inside the tissues, it is dependent on various factors. The first factor is the microbial load inside the gut of the animal. The larger is the microbial load, better will be the process of invasion. The physiological state of animal is also very very critical ahead to slaughter because it will also affect how the microorganisms are able to penetrate. Whether the animal is fatigued or whether the animal is excited will also influence the microflora. The bleeding which is taking place in the animal also encourages the bacterial spread and also influences the chemical changes that are going to happen inside the tissues. When we talk about the microbial invasion inside the tissue, it is again dependent upon the factor that whether if the hygienic bleeding is happening, it will maintain the meat quality. The speed of cooling is also very important because if the cooling is quick, it will diminish, it will reduce the speed of microbial invasion inside the tissues. 
when we are talking about the growth inside the meat it is dependent upon the type and quantity of the microbes and this type and quantity of the microbes will also depend upon the physical characteristics of the meat for example the amount of uncovered flesh surface how much is the uncovered area because this is directly proportional to the speed of spoilage as the maximum microbial load of the host organism is there for the aerobes to act upon then crushing of the meats also increases the exterior surface and promotes the growth of the microbes. When we talk about the microbial growth within the meat, it is dependent upon the chemical features of the meats, which is like how much is the moisture content, because this moisture is helpful in establishing whether microorganisms could grow up or what type could grow. When we talk about the type of the meats is very very important to see the amount of fermentable carbohydrates if there is deficiency of fermentable carbohydrates and there is a elevated content of proteins then it tends to support the non-fermenting microorganisms. The pH of the uncooked meat also plays a very very critical role especially the pH range of 5.7 to not more than 7.2. Presence of oxygen also creates an environment which is aerobic. Therefore, this aerobic environment if it is present will encourage the growth of aerobic bacteria, yeast and molds. In case of hard meat pieces, the interiors, the, the circumstances are anaerobic. So, we will see the proliferation of anaerobes. Temperature also plays a very, very critical role in deciding the type of microorganisms which are going to grow. For example, low temperature favors the psychotrophs, whereas the chilling temperatures, they promote psychophiles and most of the spoilage is protolysis. If it is the normal room temperature, then the mesophile bacteria are able to grow, for example, Clostridium, Bacillus and Coliforms. There are certain indicators of microbial growth in meats so that we can understand that the spoilage has taken place. A typical sign of spoilage is a sulphur smell or terrible smell or a dusty flavor. This is due to the breakdown of proteins, carbohydrates and lipids which is due to the action of bacteria, enzymes which are naturally within the meat. We can also see the slime development, there is an unpleasant smell, a, slay, a stale flavor, there is a change in the color and this change can be associated with gray, green or brown color and this is due to the growth of yeast and some bacterial species. We can also find sticky surface of meat which is usually an indication of mold spoilage. Then we see colorations also on the exterior surface of meat. These discolorations, they can be creamy, green or black, which are due to the colony formation of various mold species on the outer surface of the meat. Then we can also find putrefaction of off smells coming from the meat. These are due to the anaerobic breakdown of the proteins and this anaerobic breakdown can also take place in the interiors of the meat, in the sealed containers and the packed products which are under vacuum. When we talk about the meat spoilage, it can be aerobic, it can be anaerobic. Especially when we are talking about the spoilage by the molds which are aerobic in nature, we see the defects like sliminess, we see whiskers, whisker means the occurrence of white hairy growth which is due to thamnidium elegans, rhizopus, mucor resinosus, mucor mucido. At times we also see white spots on the meat which is due to the growth of sporotrichum carnis or geotrichum. 
When we talk about the spoilage of meat by molds, we can also see various types of discolorations happening. For example, we can see black spots which are due to cladosporium herbarum, green patches, these are usually by the growth of Penicillium species such as Penicillium expansum, Penicillium oxylicum. Even in case of meats, we see putrefaction of fat which is due to the growth of lipases or by the action of the lipases which are produced by the mold species. Like I said earlier, spoilage in meat can take place due to anaerobic conditions also and anaerobic conditions. Now we are going to highlight the anaerobic conditions, the spoilage patterns. The most common spoilage pattern in meat under anaerobic condition is sarring or sar meat. This is due to the development of sar smell and sar flavor. When we talk about the spoilage of meat under anaerobic condition, we also see the production of various types of acids such as prepuric acid, butyric acid, acetic acid and formic acid. Sometime we also see the incidence of organic acids such as lactic and succinic acid. Meat also contains enzymes which are acting throughout the ripening and the aging process and these they lead to protolysis that is the lysis of the proteins. When we are talking about anaerobic breakdown, a defect which is very very important and critical is putrefaction or disintegration. Why this is important? Because it leads to the production of foul smelling compounds such as hydrogen sulphide, indole, mercaptons, ammonia, scatol and amines. When we see the putrefaction happening, we also associate it with taints which are basically off taste or off smell and the species which is implicated is Clostridium species. When we talk about the anaerobic changes or the defects, we can also see the formation of slime on the surface or inside the meat. There is again discoloration which is usually green. Sarring in meat is due to the development of excessive amount of lactic acid along with other acid production. When we talk about the fresh meat, we will also like to include the spoilage of beef. When we say the beef has spoiled, the first thing is change in the color and this change in the color is due to the production of the brownish red metmyoglobin or metimyoglobin. We can also see spot formation which is due to the growth of a mixture of bacteria, yeast, molds and it leads to the formation of yellowish purple discolorations, white and brown black spots as a result of pigmented microbes. Stickiness occurs due to the mold growth and also whiskers can be seen on the surface of the molds which are basically due to the mycelial growth of mold species. Putrefaction and sarring is usually the outcome of bacteria. Now coming to the spoilage in fish and seafood, there are various types of spoilage which can take place. It can be oxidation, autolysis, bacterial, basically their enzymatic activity or it's a combination of above three defects. What is the outcome? The outcome first of all is detrimental, it spoils the flavor, the texture and brings about production of off odors. When we talk about the factors which affect the fish spoilage, they are dependent upon various things. The first one is type of fishes. Under this variety of fishes is very very important as we see that flat fishes they spoil faster than the round fishes. The fatty fishes they decay quickly due to the oxidation of their fatty component. And Last but not the least is the state of fishes when they are captured or trapped. Stressed fishes they spoil more quickly than those carried in with less protest. Why? Because there is a depletion of stored carbohydrates like glycogen 
and it results in low pH of the fish muscle. Now, pH is very very critical factor in the spoilage of the fish. Now, when we talk about the fish spoilage, it is also the contamination with bacteria. Now, this bacteria comes through mud, water, handlers, net and external slime along the intestinal load of the fishes. Now, when we talk about the microbial growth, this is usually limited to a small area in the fish and the bacterial disintegration products enter the fish flesh very very quickly via the process of diffusion. As a result, the fish spoils. Temperature also plays a very very critical role in extending the shelf life of the fish. Freezing is usually the method of choice for retarding the growth of bacteria. The temperature which is favorable is 0 to minus 1 degree C where we can stop the activity of microorganism hence control the spoilage. Types of spoilage which can be seen in fish. We have three categories of spoilage which is taking place in the fish. First is due to the growth of microorganisms or the microbial spoilage. Second is physical chemical spoilage which is happening and is basically due to fat oxidation in fish. Therefore, the third category is the enzymatic spoilage in fish. When we talk about the microbial spoilage in fish, it can be due to the fermentative microbes like belonging to the family Vibrionaceae along with gram negative bacteria. We can also have the psychotolerant microbes which can be like pseudomonas. Most of these psychotolerant microbes they are growing on the top surface of the chilled fishes. Vibrionaceae usually is seen in the freshly caught fish. Now coming to the third category that are the halophilic microbes. They are usually found in the salt water fishes and the genus which are implicated are pseudomonas, alkaligenes, shiracea, bacillus and micrococcus. Discolorations which are usually red are due to the growth of certain species and we can find morazella, vibrio and acinetobacter in cooled shrimps. The second type of spoilage which takes place in fishes is due to the physical chemical changes which are happening. In this case, oxygen plays a very very important role because it encourages the growth of numerous kind of decaying reactions and majority of them are oxidation of fats, oxidation of pigments and browning type reactions. The lipids of the fishes, they are abundant in poly unsaturated fatty acids and these polyunsaturated fatty acids they undergo spoilage and they bring about the production of ordinary ferrous compounds and rancidity occurs. In case of third type of spoilage which is associated with fishes we have enzymatic spoilage this is due to the action of digestive enzymes. When we talk about the digestive enzymes, these enzymes they start assimilation of the fishes themselves. They lead to the softness of the gut or belly burn. When these autolytic alterations they increase in number or they increase in potency, they lead to undesirable flavor generation. When we talk about these particular enzymes they also influence the texture, the consistency and the taste of the fillets. Seafood. When we use the term seafood we are talking about the following species such as clam, crab, lobster, octopus, oyster, shrimps and squids. Now coming to the third portion that is the spoilage in seafood. 
most of the seafood they harbor an extensive range of bacterial genus and species. Now when we talk about these bacteria, they can be the fluorescent and the non-fluorescent pseudomonads. For example, pseudomonas fluorescens, pseudomonas putida. We also have EOS microorganisms. These are like pseudomonas, aeromonas, enterococcus faecalis. All these reactions which take place, they lead to the development of sulfites, amines, aldehydes, alcohols, organic acids in addition to ketones with obnoxious and undesirable off days. When this happens, it leads to decrease in the edibility of these seafood and most of the time the spoilage in seafood occurs at elevated temperatures and the most common defect which is seen there is sarring which is due to the reaction of sugars or the fermentation of sugars into acids. At times we also associate it with sour smells and most of the time the microorganisms which are playing a role are coliforms, lactobacilli, streptococci, yeast. Now coming to the conclusion of this particular module, I would like to summarize it as that meat and meat products are prone to spoilage. They are a very good source of proteins and they have so many other nutrients. So they are equally liked by the microorganisms. Then the rate of the spoilage is dependent upon the humidity, the surrounding air quality, the temperature, the pH of the meat. When we are talking about the meat, we need to take into consideration the pre and post slaughter handling because this really affects or influences the microbial types and the load in and around the meat. The common types of spoilage which is happening in meat are due to sliminess, discolorations, of odors, putrefaction. When we talk about the fish spoilage, it is also dependent upon the species of the fish the size of the fish, how it has been caught, handling, fishing vessels and their cleanliness, processing time along with the condition of storage. When we talk about the seafood, the spoilage of seafood is dependent upon the bacterial growth along with the various number of metabolic activities which are happening. In the end, it is very, very important to keep or to maintain good hygiene practices because they will reduce the risk of foodborne diseases associated with meat, fish and the seafood spoilage.